uh, we will kick this off. Uh, welcome to our social impact spotlight. And we're, this is a format that we've introduced with Shipco to promote some of the really cool things that our members are doing. Um, we do have ongoing training every month. We do two or three training sessions on an April 15th. We're going to do ditch the pitch, how to introduce yourself, get rid of that elevator pitch and do a more authentic introduction. And then on April 22nd, we're going to use what if up to shift success. So feel free to attend any of our free training programs. You can just go to shipco.global and look on the event site and there's always new ones um, coming up uh, each month. So just as a quick introduction, uh, Terry Maxwell, I started the equivalent of a purposeful shark tank um, back in 2009 called Share on Purpose. And Share on Purpose has a business cultivator where we cultivate new concepts like Shipco uh, that went through our cultivator process. We also have a speculator fund um, where we leverage profits and invest in brands that make the world better. So I've done both the serial business startup and also invested in purposeful concepts. And I've learned a lot that I'll be sharing today. On the business cultivator side, the interesting thing that, that we found is I developed a methodology called the Conscious Business Growth Platform for how do you start, launch, build, and scale a purposeful business more authentically. And that's what Shipco is based on. Um, we've launched five brands through the cultivator Succeed on Purpose, Ignite on Purpose, Promote on Purpose, Talent on Purpose, and Shipco. And going forward, we probably won't be using the on purpose names because it got to be a bit much. So Shipco is our fifth concept. And um, I'm bringing today together some of our methods with two um, of our founding members to share a little bit about the social impact work that they're doing. So what do we mean by social impact and conscious entrepreneurships and this idea of meaningful impact? Well, first and foremost, conscious entrepreneurs are very different. When they, when they launch a product, a regular entrepreneur says, will someone buy it? A conscious entrepreneur says, will it solve a problem? And from two, the two businesses that we're spotlighting today, you're gonna hear from their heart that when they started their business, it was really because they saw a problem in the marketplace that they felt like they had an idea they could solve. When it comes to pricing and an and entrepreneur is like, oh, how much will someone pay? A conscious entrepreneur says, how much is it worth? So they're more focused on the value. And then when it comes to success, a lot of entrepreneurs say, how much money can I make? Whereas a conscious entrepreneur says, can I make a difference while I'm making money? And uh, before I talk about the different ways that businesses get funded, I just want to talk about the different type of conscious businesses. Most people start a business as what I call a purposepreneur, where it's the work that they find really meaningful. Some of them then expand that business to what I call a heart-centeredpreneur. Heart-centeredpreneur is the work and the people that are served by it is really where the meaning comes in. As we start to think about more and more impact, which is where you get into these investment vehicle opportunities, folks are really thinking about not just the meaning to me as the entrepreneur, but the impact that business will make. And that on a macro level, um, there's a lot of collaboration that occurs to really achieve one of these other types of businesses we're gonna talk about. It takes a lot of collaboration and typically we're looking at the impact on a more macro basis. How can I shift industry? How can I shift society? On the upper left is a social impact venture. Um, sometimes they're not for profit, sometimes they're PBCs, sometimes they're LC3s, but their focus is really making a social impact. And the upper right is what's known as a mission-driven brand. And a mission-driven brand is the work and the people is meaningful, but I still want to make that bigger impact. Shipco is really a mission-driven brand. There's no right or wrong. It's really just knowing which of those really um, match up with what you're wanting to do. So when it comes to funding social impact ventures and mission-driven brands, there's a couple of models that I recommend. Um, and Shipco has a pathway on these models. Um, and so what you've got to understand, um, a lot of people, they, when they think of like angel investing and they think like that, they think somebody's just going to magically plop out of the sky, give you money. 
and let you start your business. And that's not really the way that it works because when somebody invests, quote unquote, in your business, the, the, regardless of how they invest, and I'll go through the various investment vehicles available to you, that investor is still looking at two things. How much risk am I going to experience from this um, investment? Risk is, am I ever going to see my money again? Um, and then they're comparing that to the return of the ROI. So when an investor, whether they're investing $1,000, $100,000, doesn't matter, they're basically saying, how much risk, if I give this person, I've written somebody a $1,000 check and say, okay, you go start that business. Here's $1,000. What are you going to do with that $1,000? Well, that, that might not have been a lot of risk to me because it's just $1,000. I'm not likely to see a return on it because it's just $1,000. So that notion of risk compared to return there's not a lot of risk because it's just a thousand dollars. Again, I know thousand dollars is a lot of money. Don't get me wrong, but you, you just kind of see as an investor, that's like, okay, here, here's a thousand dollars, go start that business, but I'm not expecting a return. So that's the thing you have to understand is an investor is saying, how much money do you want? How much risk is there associated with that money? And what's my likely return? And there's four types of ways that people can invest. But the trade-off is always the greater the risk, the higher the required ROI. So if, for example, somebody wants $10,000, I got to know exactly how I'm going to get a return on that. And I don't want to lose that money because that's a lot of money. I could put that $10,000 in a lot of different places. I want to make sure I'm going to get a return. So one of the ways that investors invest is they can invest if you're a nonprofit. If you're a nonprofit, it's considered a donation. So as an investor, I, I write checks to nonprofits on a regular basis because I can write that off on my taxes. So there's no risk. It's the least, least risk vehicle. So if you're thinking about funding a startup, if you set it up as a nonprofit, you can get donations. The problem is there's a lot of rules that come for how those donations can be spent. So it's not necessarily the best vehicle for the entrepreneur to set it up as a nonprofit, but from an investor, it's a good vehicle because I can write it off. So that's vehicle number one. Vehicle number two is crowdfunding. Crowdfunding, um, you, you know, it could be GoFundMe or there's all sorts of different variations. Typically crowdfunding is give, get. I'm going to give you $100 or $500, and I'm going to get something in return from that. I'm going to get a certificate. I'm going to get a product. I'm going to get a special hat. And crowdfunding is a lot lower risk, um, but the return is not as great. And so, you know, a lot of people that are writing books use crowdfunding to get their book funded. So crowdfunding is really, really good at the beginning of a concept to build a prototype or something like that. It's a lot harder when you get a little further down the pike because the give get is not as appealing once that business is stood up. Number three is what is known as pre-seed or seed funding. We did Shipco off of this model. And what pre-seed and seed funding allows the investor to do is if it's not an actual entity, then there's some uh, tax write-offs related to that because it's not really an investment per se. I'm actually paying for an attorney or I'm covering some of the costs in essence. Pre-seed and seed funding, you got to talk to your CPA just to make sure that your vehicle will work. But what it allows, um, if the entity is not set up yet, it allows the folks that are helping build it either through sweat equity um, or by covering some of your costs, they get a tax benefit to that. So that's a good vehicle. Um, and then the last one is equity funding. And equity funding is, it is an entity and you're gonna give me $10,000 and I'm gonna give you why um, equity in the enterprise. Now, when you do equity funding, there's several different models in equity funding, but there's a lot of rules that come with equity-based funding. And now the one that I don't have in here is debt funding. And if you just kind of picture debt funding, debt funding is I'm going to loan you the money to start the business. 
debt funding basically kind of spans all um, of these avenues. So it sits right here. And debt funding is I'm going to loan you the money. And the question that I'm asking myself is how likely am I to get that back? So debt funding pretty much scans all three of these levels. And rather than getting equity in your company, I'm going to actually, um, uh, you know, you're going to pay me back. You're going to have a note or something like that to pay me back. So those are the different funding models. Um, and we have a couple of experts that we're licensing content from as we speak for a pathway on um, funding your startup in essence. And the entrepreneurs that I'm gonna be bringing um, to you today are at various stages of startup. Both of them are, they've already had success and they're They've learned from that success and now they're going to the next level and they're gonna be sharing with you the different models that they've adapted. The thing that I like to point out to you before we bring the first spotlight up is these um, circles that you see plus the debt, these are like the traditional models, but in each of these models, there's variance, there's different ways to get there. And the reason why I say that is don't allow yourself to be discouraged, let's say, you went out there and you did a GoFundMe and you, you, you thought you wanted to raise you know, $50,000 and you got four. Don't let that discourage you because that just means there's a better way to get there. Or let's say that you, know, you tried to raise some you know, seed capital for your business and it didn't work and you've got to find another way. Well, who knows? That might lead you to a path where you could get PPP funding or something like that. So the, the, as a person who, who both invested and lost <laughs> a lot of money and made money and lost money um, with these different models, there's not a right or wrong. There's not a, it will always work. There's not a perfect way to do it. But what I can tell you emphatically and including the debt um, option that we talked about um, where someone's gonna loan you the money and that's gonna sit right here in that scenario, you know, whoever you're talking to, what you've got to understand is they are saying to themselves, how much risk is there in this business? And how likely am I to get my money back? How likely am I to see a return? And so whether you're, whether you're doing it in crowdfunding or pre-seed and seed funding or equity funding or debt funding, you've got to make sure that you can answer the risk and show the investor, I'm going to tell you exactly how to do that, show the investor how they're actually going to get a return. And then you've got to remember the greater the risk and greater the risk is more money. Um, uh, it's, in a, it's in an industry that has a lot of risk in it. It's an unproven model. So those are kind of the big three in the area of risk. Um, the more the risk, the more return that they're looking to get. The last thing that I wanna say about this before um, I talk about what I mean by return is just because somebody is a conscious investor or a social impact investor, doesn't mean that they throw this out because they still care about these things. They still care about risk. They still care about return. It's not that they don't care about your enterprise. It's that at the end of the day, they want their money to make money. Um, and all investors, whether they're investing $5,000 or $50,000, they want their money to generate a return. I want to know it's doing good, but I also want to know that I'm getting a return. So I've learned that the hard way um, because when we first started our portfolio, I invested in 14 different concepts, big mistake, too many. Um, and, I, and all of them were heart-based entrepreneurs or purposeful entrepreneurs that that were not set up to scale. So I didn't get a return on that investment. So I learned the hard way from what I'm gonna say. And so what I'm gonna say is you have to tell um, in your pitch, whether you're um, making a presentation like you're gonna see today, or you've got a one pager, how does that investor get a return? Not like listing it out, but you have to actually show them how they're gonna get a return. Um, for example, when we were doing the funding for Shipco and I prepared the memorandum that I sent to the original investors, I talked about the fact of how many conscious entrepreneurs were they. And if we captured 1% of the market of, of the three plus million entrepreneurs, what would that return look like from their investment? Now, in the case of Shipco, the investment costs were very low compared to a lot of businesses. 
So I didn't need as high of a return. But in that memorandum, it basically said, you know, here's how you're going to get a return. We're just going to, we're setting a very modest goal of capturing 1% of the market. And if, if we get 1% of the 3 million conscious entrepreneurs out here, here's what that, here's what your return on that investment looks like. So you have to be able to give them that. And then secondly, you also have to be able to answer the question, how does your business actually make money? And you've got to really understand some of those fundamentals like revenue and gross profit and SG&A and um, cost of goods sold. And you've got to be able to articulate how your business makes money. Now, for those of you that are Shipco members and you're in the process of figuring out how to fund your enterprise, the great news is we have a pathway that's coming um, we have a partnership with an organization called Slicing Pie that I absolutely love. And he's going to be both a partner with us and um, he's going to be a master teacher on the platform. We have um, some partnerships coming with some crowdfunding experts, as well as some other master teachers that, that will show you how to raise capital. And they're going to help you answer these two questions. How does an investor get a return? And how does your business make money? And if you've ever done this um, before, you know how difficult it is to answer these questions. So part of what we want to explore every quarter is we'd like to do social impact spotlights showcasing some of our members who are in the process of raising capital through various means. And they're going to basically pitch their ideas. And it's a great opportunity for them to practice their pitch as they're sorting out the different ways um, that they can get a return uh, for their investors and how their business actually makes money. And as you guys come up, um, I'll probably, if you're okay, ask a few questions because both of you have gone through the ups and downs of what it's like, you know, to start a business, build the business, figure out how to fund the business, you know, fund it on your savings and credit cards and all that kind of stuff. And I don't want you to be shy about that as you're talking through, because it's not easy to do this. And, our goal with the Shipco community is to bring together folks that can invest in concepts and then also um, the training and the expertise to prepare you to actually um, do this in the marketplace. So um, with that being said, any questions before we do our first spotlight? Any questions for me? All right. Let's do our first spotlight. Um, Jim uh, Kupchak and I met in, I guess it was 2016, 2017. I don't even know anymore. And um, I was, it was part of a conscious entrepreneurship community that I had joined. Um, and I, I went through the book of all the people that were going to be there and looked at their businesses. And I picked five people that I said I wanted to meet. And three of them, when I sat down, were at the table. And Jim was one of them. And we were literally sitting next to each other. I feel like he's a brother from another mother. Um, and when he told me about his concept, I, I was hooked. I knew he had something powerful. So Jim, tell us a little bit about you and um, your journey with Mindful Market um, and you know how you got to this beautiful dream that you've created. Uh, thank you, Terry. Yeah, it was uh, pretty much serendipity when we met uh, about four years ago and uh, really grateful for this opportunity uh, Mindful Market um, is a platform similar to Etsy for impact, uh, socially impact businesses. And I um, was basically a student athlete growing up and had some moments of, of truth and um, came up with a pretty kind of funky, progressive, holistic product. Fast forward seven years. I started putting that product on um, the Etsy's and store envies and other platforms that are out there. And it seemed like there just wasn't that platform for holistic type products, products that enriched well-being, um, conscious based products. So um, I decided to build it. So that was the genesis about four years ago uh, for Mindful Market. Um, many trials, not too many tribulations yet. Uh, we're close to breaking even, um, but we're um, really happy where we're at uh, with the marketplace right now. We've got about 500 small businesses on the platform since launch about a year and a half ago, and about 2,500 
conscious offerings. And so Jim, in a nutshell, you basically are a matchmaker marketplace for conscious entrepreneurs that have products and services or trying to get them to the market and consumers that are wanting to buy them. Um, and I think you, you were refer to it like Etsy, but for conscious business, is that a good way to sum that up? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Our value proposition is to offer a robust platform similar to Etsy, um, a, a community, uh, and we try to partner up with um, businesses like similar to Shifco, and then tools and tools and resources for business growth and personal transformation. So not just a platform connecting a buyer and a seller. We also want to really, uh, our mission is to help um, mission-based businesses grow and purpose-based businesses grow. Awesome. And so part of um, what you what you're doing is you're having entrepreneurs open a shop. Um, so tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So if, you, if you're a heart-centered entrepreneur and you've got an offering, a product or a service that you think fits Mindful Market, we've got about 150 values, um, mainly that enrich, whether they enrich well-being or enrich the planet sustainable or give back in any way, um, chances are you fit our model. And we have a subscription-based uh, model. It's currently about $20 a month. We do not take any commission and there's no upload fee. So for $20 a month, pretty much the, the cost of a banner ad, uh, a cheap banner ad, you can basically increase your brand awareness and come in contact with um, a whole, I mean, our, our subscription for our email is at 20,000, uh, just a, a big base of conscious consumers who shop based on their values. So a couple of things I want to highlight. So if I'm a conscious entrepreneur, I buy a shop on your marketplace and that handles all of my e-commerce. And if I don't want to do a website, I don't need to do it. I can basically do it on your site for about 20 bucks a month. And any products that are sold through the marketplace, you don't take a commission of. I get 100% of that, correct? That's correct. If you don't have a website at all, this is just a, a really a great opportunity. Uh, I think that the cost to run an average website is about $300. Um, a month uh, from some of the research that we did. And if you do have a, a website, um, our goal is to help promote your brand and, and bring on new consumers. This is just another avenue um, to, um, to receive some sales. I love that. And so you, as an entrepreneur, they can join, they can set up a shop for three, for free for 30 days. And, um, and then after that, it's around 20 bucks a month, correct? That's correct. Free 30 day trial. And then up to a year, uh, we give a money back guarantee because we really want it to be a no brainer for a conscious entrepreneur, any entrepreneur to be on the platform, help us grow your business. And, um, and if you really don't think that um, it's worth it, we have no problem, you know, writing you a check for the money that you've invested so far. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. And then if I want to buy products, tell me a little bit about that. Do I have to pay to be a member to buy products on the marketplace? So, so you can sign up for free to be on the marketplace. And, and really, it, it's just these days, and I have nothing against Etsy at all. Um, they're a great company. They're, you know, our inspiration, actually. But they're really, I don't want to say gouging the, um, their sellers, but they're taking a big percentage um, with Mindful Market, you sign up for free. If you're, if you're looking for, you know, we've got a bunch of um, different categories similar to Amazon, bath and body, beauty, home, et cetera. Um, you, you can support one of these co conscious-based businesses and you, and you know that 100% of the, the monies that you're paying are going to support that, that heart-centered entrepreneur. We do not take the commission, like I mentioned earlier. That is amazing. And also when you run specials um, and discounts and things like that, um, do the entrepreneurs that the shop owners pay for that or does that come out of Mindful Markets po pocket? Yeah, we try to run as many um, kind of specials, site-wide sales throughout the year and Mindful Market absorbs all of that um, discount on behalf of the shop owners. And it's really that giving back feel that that you're doing that's really powerful. And I know the search function, Jim, I have to tell you, 
as somebody who's watched um, this be born from the from the beginning, the search function is outstanding. I was thinking about something the other day, and I was like, oh, I really would like to get a mask, you know, that's a little more fun. And I went online and I searched, um, and I was amazed at the product depth and breadth, but also the search function of how easy it was to find exactly what I was looking for on your product. I mean, it was, it was, I hate to say it, the big A word, but it was Amazon easy. And I could literally find whatever I was looking for and the quality of the products just blew me away. So you've done an awesome job as a, as a user and a shop owner, you've done an awesome job on that. Anything else you want to tell us before we talk about this amazing program that you've created, um, you know, to get you through that, because you're almost a break even, which is a very difficult thing to do for those of us who've started businesses. It's very challenging. You're almost there. And this is yeah. going to be the way that you're going to get that last mile. Anything else you want to tell us about the marketplace before we talk about that program? The only thing I'd like to say that I, I like to stress with others and in, in what we kind of try to focus and outline in our social media is when you do purchase from the marketplace, um, you're helping a heart centered entrepreneur and it just, you're making a difference when you shop. And it's really like a feel good um, knowing that you're supporting a, a heart centered small business owner and knowing that you're, you know, chances are you're enriching the world. And, you, you know, our vision is to elevate humanity through conscious business, you're really making a difference by supporting the, the uh, conscious entrepreneurs on the platform. It's really a feel good. Um, money is not going to um, like an evil empire. Um, it's really going back into the marketplace. And um, it's just, uh, it, you know, I can't emphasize it enough how, how when I purchase, um, I just actually bought um, a couple face masks from one of our entrepreneurs. Uh, it just feels good. And, and that's what I'd love everybody to know that, you know, there are marketplaces that are a little easier, um, but the, one of the reasons that we call it mindful market is you should really pause before you purchase and, and really think about the impact that your purchase is gonna, is gonna make on whether it be the environment or a small business owner. Yeah, and you have really, really done a great job with that. Again, we bought holiday gifts and all sorts of things off of the marketplace. Um, and now it's become one of those things when I'm looking for something, I think of mindful market first, which is is really key. And, it, and it, it's truly the value-based. I didn't understand that at first, but I really have come to appreciate that. The value-based way of shopping based on my values that I, I think that you've, you've perfected as you've built the system. Um, and just, you know, my hat's off to you uh, as you've done this. So tell us a little bit about the Pay It Forward program. I know we're gonna have um, three shops um, that we're gonna fund with our various businesses. So tell us about this program. Yeah, we're really excited to launch this. We, we launched it, we did a soft launch last week and it's really, um, it, it's geared to, to give small businesses that make impact a chance to, you know, I mean, we think we're really cost effective. We've done many a focus group, uh, focus studies and, 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 you know, talk to a bunch of entrepreneurs about costing. And we think it's, it's, it's pretty kind of cheap to be on the platform if you're really serious about your business and you're not a hobby. Um, but what we want to do is we want to offer entrepreneurs, small businesses, small impact type businesses, the, the chance to be on the platform for free for a year, um, just to help get them going or just introduce them to mindful market. We're really excited to, to partner up with 1% for the planet on this. So the way the program works is you can sponsor a shop for a year. Um, you talk to your CPA, it's, it's considered in many cases, if not all, it's considered a tax deduction. Uh, if you have the, the money to, to fund, whether it be a small business or a person, um, and you can sponsor that shop for a, for a year, and then we're going to help them generate the revenue and then um, hopefully encourage the entrepreneur to pay it forward. Um, so we're really, you know, we, we launched it, soft launch last year, and there's a, a big company out of Buffalo, like I mentioned earlier, I'm based out of Buffalo. Um, they're decent sized, they're all about buy local. Um, they love what we're doing. Um, they're just, it's a wonderful little business in, in the Buffalo area and it's called Great Lakes Medical Imaging. And they um, just kind of sent us the check for um, 
for 10 shops to get us going. So they just sent us a check for um, $2,400. We're really, really excited. So the emails are going to be coming out. It's just a way to give back. If you are um, successful, you know, you might not have in a, a purpose-based business, but you might just love what we're doing and you really want to make an impact any way you can. So you don't have to have a business. You can just, um, you know, just kind of donate um, for the sake of helping somebody that does make impact. So it's your way to give back. And so I basically buy a shop, but um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of loan it to somebody to use it for a year. And then that should get them up and get them successful. And then hopefully when they're successful, they'll buy a shop, they'll pay for their own shop, and then they'll buy another shop for somebody else. Is that the idea? That, that's exactly the idea. Exactly. And we're going to match you up with the shop. And if you have a shop in mind, say you want to sponsor a shop in your neighborhood, uh, by all means, you know, we'll take a quick look at the shop and make sure that, you know, they've kind of fit our criteria and they're, they're impact driven and, you know, give back, et cetera. Um, and that's exactly, that's it in a nutshell. We're really excited. And, and all the monies generated are just going back into the website. They're not going to any salaries. It's just going to kind of take us over the hump and, and just really get us in good position to um, kind of market more. Um, just to help our, it's all about our small businesses on the platform. Every day we wake up, we're like, how can we promote? How can we share on our social media? How can we, you know, send an email out to our customer base and just promote the small business on the platform? That's, that's what it's all about. And this is just another program to help our small businesses on the platform. I love that. Beautiful, beautiful program. Jim, anything else you want to tell us about Mindful Market, your journey, um, the Pay It Forward program? You know, it's, it's been a long, it's been a long journey. Um, hopefully it's going to be time to, to kind of crack open the bubbly um, soon if we break even. Uh, one day I might be able to, you know, kind of collect the paycheck, but um, it, it's, it's been a long ride. But with, with all the hurdles, you know, I always just say it's all about persistence and passion, and um, and and it's been a rough journey. It's been a I wouldn't say a rough journey. I mean, it's been all it's all about love and and the high vibration. There's never been any fear, um, but I'm telling you, mark my words, one of these days, it's gonna it's gonna make for a fun TED talk. Absolutely, there's no doubt <laughs> in my mind, and then some. Um, it's a it's a beautiful concept. It's been executed in my opinion, flawlessly, even though it, it's hard to do, you've done a fabulous job with it and it just keeps getting better and better. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of what you've created and I'm, I'm proud that we contribute, we'll be able to buy three pay it forward shops um, as part of that program. So yeah. if anybody is interested in helping Mindful Market, it sounds like there's three ways. One is you're looking for folks to jump on the platform as consumers of your product for sure. Secondly, you're looking for conscious entrepreneurs to purchase pay it forward shops. And then third is if you want an e-commerce solution, Mindful Market is also a Shipco partner. And I believe you have a Shipco partnership um, option as well, Jim. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. I was going to, you know, I was going to say be remiss for not mentioning that Shipco um, and everything that I've learned through the Shipco platform and through Terry um, it's just been amazing. I'm all about authentic demand generation and, and differentiation and all the courses are just, are just wonderful. It just really resonates with me. I've learned so much. Um, and I was really kind of like stoked and grateful that we entered into the partnership with um, Shiftco and anybody on the Shiftco platform um, receive, if you're, if you're a member of Shiftco, you receive the subscription for 50% off or $10 a month. You just can't beat it just for being a member, member of Shiftco. And Shiftco members also receive, I believe it's 20 or 25% off um, anything site-wide on the platform. And Mindful Market, uh, we absorb that cost. Um, we really, you know, we just can't say enough. And, and we're really excited to be partners with Shiftco. Yeah, and I think it's important because um, I know our Promote on Purpose team is um, getting ready to start the partnership launch. That 20% discount site-wide on any products for Shipco members is huge. So 
um, in addition to people being able to put their businesses on the mindful market platform, leveraging that discount um, and being able to purchase products on there. And, and I think it's amazing that you guys absorb the cost and you don't pass that on to the entrepreneurs. That is very unique. And I think it goes back to the fact that, you know, you're that epitome of a conscious entrepreneur that is saying, how do I make the world better? The money will come someday. It's going to come uh, through another avenue. It's going to come from the exposure that Mindful Market gets, but I'm going to first focus on making the world better. And you've done that in spades. Thank you. Uh, real quick, real, real quick, Terry, I do see a question that came in from Christina um, revolving or asking about shipping to Canada. Um, just an FYI, the platform is on a, it's on a back end called Magento. It's really powerful. I think Magento did about a trillion dollars of sales in 2019. And we are currently set up for Canada and the United States. That's our big two hubs. So um, a lot of the Canadian, I just bought something from one of our customers in Canada, shop owners, they ship to, to Buffalo where I live. Uh, we do have global shops all over, all over the place, but not as many, obviously. Uh, primarily, we are based in Canada and USA. I love our, our neighbors to the north. north. <laughs> it's just a short car, car drive, right? <laughs> yeah, it's about a 10 minute walk for me. And I'm so fired up that the bridge isn't open right now. So Christina, if you know Justin at all, can you shoot him a message and have him open the bridge? That would be amazing. <laughs> awesome. Great. I'm glad, Christina, you asked that question. Uh, Jim, anything else you want to share? I I'm all set. I really appreciate the opportunity, Terry. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Great job. Congratulations. And again, the Promote team is getting ready to launch the partnership program and will also be promoting both the Pay It Forward program as well as those amazing discounts you're giving Shipco members. Our second spotlight is actually somebody I think I met through Jim and, um, and, and I was so impressed with her vision um, and just watching her build this piece by piece and going through all those ups and downs um, you know, that, that you know, are required when you're building something that changes the world. And she's got a public benefit corporation called Solutions. Um, Jocelyn, are you there? Hello, everyone. <laughs> Tell us about Solutions. Thank you. Wow, it's amazing to be here today. I appreciate it, Terry. Thank you so much. Um, oh, Solutions. So I consider myself a uh, social transformation designer, and I'd like to design businesses that create social transformation and social change in the world. So I put a lot of time and energy in thinking about how we can use business for social good. Shipco is the perfect place to be. Um, this uh, company I started um, a couple years ago, about a year and a half ago in Colorado, and we make candles is what we started with. So we make candles. Uh, we hope to move into home goods, food care items uh, for the stylish and discerning socially conscious consumer. On the flip side of that, the people who make the candles with me are involved in uh, what I've called a day's work. And the day work is a low barrier uh, day labor program in which we hire people who are homeless or in critical need to help us make the candles. And then a um, couple hours a day, people come in and um, work with us. It's been the most rewarding experience. I just can't say enough. There's a couple pictures of our candles. Um, and the tagline that I like to use for this is that the solutions that we're creating to help those who are in critical need aren't necessarily a handout as you might find in a nonprofit um, or a service that is in place to help people. It's a hand up. So I like to share the idea that $20 in the hand of somebody who is homeless or in critical need means the world versus $20 or $50 in the hand of somebody who has uh, food on the table and a shelter over their head. I love that. So let me just make sure I'm understanding this. So you, part sure. of what Solutions does is you create these really cool candles. And by the way, I am a huge fan of the candles. <laughs> amazing, absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. And you create these products, but the labor that you use are coming from people that are homeless that are trying to get out of that situation. Is that correct? 
That's correct, Terry. Yes, we put a lot of uh, research into the products to make sure they're as eco-friendly and as healthy as you can make in the industry today at a, um, at a reasonable price. And um, we do, I, uh, I meet with people and bring people in to work with us to make products, uh, to do everything from cleaning to making products to doing um, um, computer work uh, or selling at craft fairs and festivals. That's amazing. And then you also have a sister company called World Coffee. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Again, my designer brain. <laughs> uh, I've been working on this coffee company probably for the last uh, five, six, seven years. World Coffee, World Community. And it's all about how we use um, how we can create the world in which we want to live. So this also is a public benefit corporation promoting concepts of healthy global citizenship and community wellness through roasting coffee. My partner and I roast coffee here in Vermont. Uh, every uh, bag of beans is freshly roasted, ethically sourced. Uh, we try to make sure our supply chain is um, really clear and really fair. And uh, we're working on moving into brick and mortar shop to offer healthy takeaway foods as well. In our World Coffee uh, Company, we will also employ those in our day labor work program and have people also make the foods that, and uh, work in the shop also. This is amazing. So there's two different ways that you can um, employ people through the day's work. They can make candles or they can participate in the coffee making. Is that- Absolutely. Uh-huh, yep. Tell us a little bit more about the day's work because I think this, this you had me at hello when you- <laughs> introduce this program and I'm like how do we license this program this is brilliant so tell me a little bit more about a day's work sure well it um, st started with the conception of watching people ask for money uh people in need you know how do we get hand money into the hands of people who need it the most I actually came across this quote the other day that offering an income to people who need it is like venture capital from the people it, it grows our communities and our systems from the ground up one of the things that I think is interesting about employment is a lot of people who are on the margins or in critical need have a hard time getting work. Um, they may not have all the documentation they need. They may not have the skills. So I wanted to create a completely low barrier, basically don't ask, don't tell, come on in, work with us for a few hours day labor program. Um, we don't necessarily uh, hire long-term, that could be something as our company grows in the future, uh, but we're more of a, uh, a moment in time kind of service that we're, it's mutually beneficial for everybody. So uh, when people come in, they do uh, receive money at the end of the day uh, for the work completed. Uh, everybody gets a meal and of course coffee or tea if they want. Um, we've offered job skills development. People can say they've made candles or done some research for us or sold at craft fairs and festivals. They can also receive a professional job reference. We talk about life skills. And I think one of the, um, a lot of feedback I got from the people with whom I worked in Colorado was that coming in out of the cold or out of the elements gave them a sense of community, a sense of connection, uh, feeling that somebody in the world cared about them at that moment in time and just overall support uh, was one of the things that served to uplift people even more than just the paycheck itself. Mm, that's amazing. And some of the things it allows them to do with that community and um, contribution, uh, talk a little bit more about all of those other aspects um, from be the housing opportunities and connections that you have all the way to doing something meaningful with their day. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of how it helped people um, move up in their lives or in the system. Um, we've got some pictures here of um, people making candles and uh, serving coffee. That's actually my partner and I going to coffee school, but I, I put it in there so you could see what, what are some of the activities people could be doing uh, as part of the day labor program. Um, up at the top, John's pouring candles. Uh, John's story is that uh, he lived in Colorado during the winter time and had to cover himself with hay to uh, survive the elements of the winter in Colorado. So coming in to warm up and make candles, get a meal and feel like somebody cared and supported him for the day was life changing and he has now become housed. 
Um, I also worked with somebody who lived in his car and was going to get his car repossessed if he wasn't able to uh, pay a bill or a fee that he needed to pay. And by working in the company, he was able to pay that and remain living in his car. So we're, we're really dealing with people um, who are in great critical need. I also had a gentleman who um, was homeless because he survived three hurricanes uh, in the Caribbean. Uh, he's a college educated young man and just needed to get on his feet and the experience and the job reference and the little bit of money that he got with us, he's now uh, fully employed. Oh, that's amazing. And I love the fact that like, the things that I didn't think about, you know, are the, just getting out of the weather and into some place. And that's going to segue, I know, in a minute to um, what you're up to next and how you're going to extend this. But that notion of how do you go about the life skills training with Fit for Peace? Talk a little bit about that um, beyond the community and the getting them out of the elements. Talk a little bit about Fit for Peace. Yeah, sure. Um, Fit for Peace actually is a program I've written based on uh, my education and peace studies throughout the years and my own education of personal transformation that I've experienced. So we would sit together in a group and it was completely optional and just talk about uh, the steps involved in that program and just have a really light conversation about how do I better use um, how do I better use my judgment in terms of the choices I make in my life? And how do I continue to be aware and conscious of the ways in which um, we can do better in the world, all of us? Oh, that's awesome. And so you really yeah. get the flow of learning going back and forth between the folks that are working with you uh, in the day labor program, but then also folks that are trying to make the world better as well. We're all learning from each other. That's right. And I just I just want to add that all of the um, ways in which I approach social change are really also low barrier. Nothing is shoved down anyone's throat. Nothing, nobody has to do anything they don't want to do. Um, it's not um, any type of program that uh, would be off-putting, I think. We, we welcome people with an open heart and that is absolutely my favorite thing to do. That's cool. And I love that quote. Um, a basic income is like venture capital for the people. I like that. And then talk a little bit about um, what led you to this latest pivot and where you're going with this. Okay, great. Um, so a lot of times when offering a service um, within a social business or a for-profit uh, organization, the service itself and the business objectives of making a profit to be be sustainable or to grow is not cost neutral at all. There's a service cost that is involved with bringing people in who um, aren't completely skilled in their skill set to be able to sit down and take over a job right away. There's a transition period. There's some training involved, and all of that time um, time costs uh, the company money. So. What I've learned in the process of designing social businesses that have a really strong social mission is that it's really challenging to do a wholesale retail uh, situation, um, excuse me, wholesale situation because the margins just aren't there with the products we're selling. So what I uh, discovered is that if we wanna to continue to do the day labor program that we're going to um, need to sell retail to really achieve our social impact, which is That's exciting because I love people. <laughs> Yeah, I want to highlight that because a lot yeah. of people don't understand that. And I know when when we were working on your business canvas, we were talking about that wholesale model and the number, you just can't make the numbers add up. Like you can't sell right. enough wholesale to really make that work. That's so tell me, tell me about this insight on the retail side as we're coming out of COVID and we're starting to get, you know, think about um, shopping again and going out again. Tell me a little bit about this pivot and then we'll let you share where you're going in 2021. I'm um, sure. Um, so the pivot we're making is to go brick and mortar, uh, believe it or not. <laughs> we're not scared to go brick and mortar during COVID. I think some of the uh, research that I've done just um, general in general awareness and online is that people haven't necessarily stopped shopping retail and shops. I think it provides people the avenue to get out of their homes and to continue to um, buy their cup of coffee or their candles. Those kinds of items that we're selling also, candles and those kinds of things, people really like to touch, smell, feel, um, get your cup of coffee, 
um, on the go. So we're doing, um, our pivot is to go brick and mortar, but it's also takeaway. Um, we're not creating seating inside. My goal has always been to have it uh, takeaway food, healthy food place um, where we do sell products that you can purchase, but um, not necessarily sit in. So you're going to awesome. have- Yeah, basically where everything is going. I'm sorry, go ahead. Coffee bar, healthy food, mm -hmm. and, and the folks that are going to serve um, will be the day's work employees. Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, sure. Uh, that would be on an entry level kind of basis um, in terms of training people to be able to sell retail and uh, how to be a barista and those kinds of things. And we'll also have the back end of production that will continue to be uh, making candles and uh, potentially the foods that we sell, uh, depending on what space we can find. Oh, that is awesome. That is cool. Yeah, we're excited about that. Yeah, so you know, you've kind of gone through costing this out and the capital you need to raise. So talk a little bit about that. Sure, um, with any brick and mortar, there's always a, um, a little bit of space renovation that needs to happen in terms of sinks, um, the build out, all of the coffee equipment, espresso machines are quite uh, costly. However, once you get to that point, the margins for coffee are outstanding and um, so we're really optimistic that the build out cost of what it takes to start a coffee bar is really kind of a low level. It's, you know, it's not a couple hundred thousand dollars. It's really doable and achievable in a small space, especially if you're not creating a full sit down uh, cafe restaurant type situation. And so you're looking to raise 44,000 and because after that capital then is deployed and getting it stood up, you think you'll be at break even in 1.5 years because the margin is so good on coffee and food. And because you're gonna be leveraging the day labor program, I'm both giving back to the community as well as um, you know, generating a, and building a profitable business. Bingo, yeah. Um, food, coffee, candles are all great margin um, type of products. Awesome. Wow, this is really cool. This is very exciting. It's, uh, you know, it's amazing how far you've come since I first met you. And I love this mm -hmm. latest pivot. I think it's spot on uh, where you need to go. So what's the best way for people to get a hold of you um, if they're interested in partnering with you on this venture? Uh, sure. Um, our email is connect, C-O-N-N-E-C-T at worldcoffee-worldcommunity.com. I can type that into the chat as well. And our uh, website is also worldcoffee-worldcommunity.com. That's amazing. And you can also, if you're a candle lover, um, where do I buy the candles from? And I, I, I highly, highly recommend <laughs> candles as well. The coffee's amazing and the candles are the best I've ever seen. Thank you, Tara. That means a lot. Uh, solutions. Uh, the website is solutions, PBC for public benefit corporation.com. And um, I couldn't have done it without Shipco. Let's just start there. I mean, the, the training and the experience that I've received, uh, Terry, over these last uh, few years has been invaluable and life changing. Um, and you, you are my hero. Thank you. Well, we're just doing our thing, just like <laughs> doing your thing. So congratulations on- and Thanks, Jim. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Congratulations. And we'll look forward to promoting this as well and promoting uh, what you've got going on. And then, you know, as we, as we wrap up um, and, you know, that notion of funding social impact ventures and mission-driven brands, it's not as black and white and cut and dry as angel investing and crowdfunding. Like there's a lot of variations. And today you've seen two examples of that, of people that are getting creative. They're bringing together different business models to create change and good in the world. Um, they're you know, coming up in Jim's case with the pay it forward program. And in Jocelyn's case, she's combining three different business models with a retail structure, which is brilliant. Um, in order to create that social change. So it's, it's a beautiful thing um, to see social impact companies take off. And again, you're welcome to attend any of the events that we have at Shipco. We have three to four events a month. Um, sometimes they're ones like this, and sometimes they're training. The next two are along the lines of training. So we have Ditch the Pitch coming up on April 15th, which is how to get rid of the elevator pitch and learn how to introduce yourself more effectively. 
And then we've got an experiential session with music and movement and a concept called What If Up. That'll be on April 22nd. I wanna thank um, our two um, spotlights today. We really appreciate you guys sharing your work and sharing the amazing impact that you're making in the world. And for all of our SHIPCO members listening in and for our guests that have tuned in, if you can just focus on making a bigger impact in the world through your purpose, figure out how your business earns a profit. The combination of purpose and profits is how you make a bigger impact. You need both. It's and not or. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Thanks again, Jocelyn and Jim. Appreciate it. And I hope everybody um, is out there making as big of an impact as possible. Thanks everybody. Thank you.